Now to travel, there is a gem of a destination that's considered one of Auckland's best kept secrets. Afetu Peninsula is less than an hour from the super city CBD, but it feels a million miles away. Travel journalist Debbie Griffiths was there this time last year. Take a look. Okay, so just over the water here, we've got West Auckland, Huia. Over there, the Sky Tower, I can see it. Auckland Airport's right there, and behind us, the entire Afitu Peninsula, ready to be explored. But first, we need to check out this lighthouse. Manako Head's lighthouse has been meticulously refurbished and rebuilt using pieces from the original 1874 building. This is Auckland's only lighthouse, and it's rather unique. Very few lighthouses in New Zealand you're allowed to go in, walk around the lighthouse keeper's balcony and uh, get quite a panoramic view. We had a carpenter that built the, the wooden structure identical to the original lighthouse. The bell tower, the prisms, and so it was just a matter of craning them up and putting them on top. The rugged Afitu Peninsula is edged with white sand beaches to the east, steep sand dunes to the west, and right at the bottom, this tranquil waterway. Perfect for early morning kayaking. This is the Waikato River. Starts um, in the Tongariro National Park. Goes right through the uh, Lake Taupo and goes over the control gates there and then comes down through a whole heap of uh, dams until it finally gets down to here. On the other hand, if you're starting up at the elbow and coming down, it's just 12 and a half K cruise down in three and a half hours with a, a stop on the way for a bite to eat and the rest. And uh, you just take every right turn and you can't go wrong. Colin can also organise a mountain bike for you to enjoy Waiuku Forest before heading out to Kariatahi Beach. The accommodation of Castaways Resort clings to the side of the hill overlooking the expanse of Tasman Sea. Once we're settled into our two-bedroom chalet, we check out the activities. Here we offer the four-wheel driving so people can come out here and give it a go. We have archery, we do pistol shooting, you can go blow karting on the beach when the tides are right. Um, we have frisbee golf and we also have combat arrow tag which is more of a group activity. To the archery range first. Today, Asher is channeling Katniss Everdeen. You want to clip it right under there. Awesome. Now you're going to hold it up and you're going to draw this hand right up to your face, looking down, almost lined. Oh, well, there you have it. <laughs> that was a bullseye. Wow. Next, I take a step out of my comfort zone and behind the wheel of a four-wheel drive. Your mindset when you're driving off-road has to be very different to what you were taught to drive on-road. And uh, we're just going through the basics of how to go down a steep hill slowly, how to go up steep hills, where the limits are on side slopes, and it's all about keeping the vehicle safe and people safe. This Isuzu does the work for me. I literally take my feet off the pedals, teeter at the top of a hill and steer. Far out. Yeah, just... <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Slow and steady is the rule for most of the course, but when you see some mud, well... Make sure you're all cleaned up and ready for dinner on the balcony of your chalet or in the restaurant in time to watch the sun go down. We're really spoiled out here. I mean, to come to this view every day, you know, you come to work and you see this, it's, it's beautiful. I love seeing people's reactions. Like today, hearing people say, oh wow, and be blown away by it on a perfectly sunny day, but on a stormy winter's day, it's beautiful too. The, you know, it's very dramatic and we get these amazing sunsets and we're very spoiled. Wow, looks great, doesn't it? Well, at the moment, poor Debbie's away filming in New Caledonia. But well, we're going to hear all about that in a couple of weeks. But in the meantime, you can follow her travels on Facebook and her Insta account, Deb on the Cafe.